Most people believe that when it comes to energy, there's no such thing as a free ride. While nature offers sunlight, air, and even water for free, energy has always had a price. Whether it's wood, coal, or electricity, we've always operated under the assumption that you can't extract more energy than you invest. Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you about some uh, magnetic amplifiers. Actually, this is some very old tech. And I was looking at some of this, some old notes, and then I made the link that um, it resembles a lot of what Don Smith was doing and offers, I think, a better picture. And the thing is, it's really strange because in all of the Don Smith um, example circuits I've seen, I've never actually seen the term magnetic amplifier on it and um, a lot of people are always wondering because it was known that Don Smith left out a few parts in his um, system and this may shed a light and let me explain here. So the magnetic amplifier as I said is a very ancient technology. It was very popular and still is in military applications because it has a very interesting feature is it, al it allows us to switch very high current AC without needing transistors or any semiconductors that would not allow it. And it is compatible at high frequency, so for radar and, and uh, military application and microwave, very good for that. So they've been using this actually um, since the beginning of times, it's very traditional electronic in this sense. So let's first start with explaining how the magnetic amplifier works in its traditional sense and what we can do with that moving on. So basically, this is using magnets and this is a regular transformer with a primary and secondary. The thing with the magnetic amplifiers is we typically run them in reverse as a transformer as we normally would because the AC, the load side, likes to see a low impedance such as the light bulb, especially on the winding instead. So that is somewhat a limitation of the um, magnetic amplifier. With that said, this is the hookup. We would usually run our load off the secondary side here, even if it's our high voltage and usually most transformers, the secondary, is usually the step down, right? So it's sort of like running it in reverse. I just want to put that out there if you're wondering why we're only on the low winding side because it's a um, it's a low impedance uh, setup. So basically here we have two static magnets here and we have our magnetic stuff. pencil is alive here, marker. We have our magnetic fields here, you know, that does its thing. And the same thing here. Again, really bad drawing. And this is what happens on the other side here. And what happens is this field is what actually saturates the core. So for a very crude experiment, one can take these two magnets and space them away from the core or closer to the core and you will notice the light bulb either going brighter or dimmer. But of course, it's the current that's being driven here from our source. We still need a trigger like anything else, which I've explained. So in a traditional sense, very interesting because you see no semiconductors in the traditional sense, but this may not be very practical, but someone might be able to take this concept and find a mechanical way, maybe even use the environment to space these apart, maybe wind windmills or something that would use real force from the nature to change the gain without having to pay more for this trigger. or. A more advanced system, of course, is we can always put some coils around these magnets here. And modulate our magnets, which will do the same thing as if we were to space them. So a very um, fine 
control mechanism if you want to go very um, detailed. So this is why you see that it can work in military applications because depending on our mechanism, we can have very, very fine control with specific, if you do want to introduce semiconductors here for the um, control, that would work too. So, um, as I've said, magnetics saturate, the magnets saturate the core here, lowering the inductive reactance in series with the load, as I've explained here. This is how it works. So, this gets us thinking, right? Let's erase our magnets here. And move on to the next step here. All right, so here's another variant that we could work with that's a little easier to work with. So we have this time here two identical transformers, and I'm going to get to that with a variable DC source. I just have it quick there, 0, 5, 10, 20, with a little arrow going between 5 and 10. This could be as simple as a DC power supply with a variable resistor. So whichever way you want to go with that, or a digital controller, or whatever. And um, you see the issue here, we still have our AC on the low um, impedance side here. So what's going to happen, folks, is we're still going to have a standard VI transformer action going on here. So if we actually have our 110 volts, 60 hertz AC on this side, the high voltage winding will want to see 60 hertz with just one transformer at a much higher voltage, which would probably fry our controller circuits. So this is what I was talking about, folks, when I was working on the quantum energy generator and I was blowing everything up back in my input and I was trying to figure out how to isolate it. Well, it's all in the magnetic amplifier. I should have thought of this. It's just putting two transformers. So what happens is it's a bucking configuration. One puts the other out of phase. So it cancels out the 60 hertz AC on the secondary side, essentially which is our control. So again, bucking configuration, very good here. And this is what we're taking advantage to filter it out. And if I would have done this, I would have probably had a lot more success without blowing my controller like I was always because I was trying to do it with semiconductors and it just never occurred to me, hey, I'm playing with AC or pulse DC here. I could do this. So this works very well. Now you might wonder, why are there diodes here? Well, in this configuration, it converts our AC to a pulse DC. Remember, as Bedini says, pulse DC is a lot better for these kinds of circuits. And we have a lot more control with pulse DC. A small change makes a drastic difference out here. And it's also more nonlinear, so that's what Tom Bearden was talking about. The diodes at that nonlinear element, it breaks up the AC into a pulse DC. So that's a bonus for us here. The diodes really help the circuit. So with that said, um, this might make you think, you know, um, all right, in a traditional sense, what do we do with this and how does it relate to the Don Smith setup? Well. Guess what, folks? This was traditionally used in the old days for audio amplifiers as well. So all we do is we eliminate the light here and we put a speaker instead. So that's my speaker. And the AC here, we need to change the frequency to a high frequency that's outside of the hearing range of the speaker or the operating range. So let's say 100K as our input here. So we'll say it's 100 volts. I know it's silly, but 100 volts AC at 100K here. 
Now we're isolating because of the transformers here at the bucking configuration. So we don't have to worry about the controller side. So now what's going to happen is, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense because this is DC. We're going to erase this. And what's going to come in here is our low level, low voltage audio input. So that's audio input right here instead of our DC bias. So what's going to happen is the, uh, the uh, core saturation is going to vary with the audio which is going to modulate the... Um, what this is, is it's actually a type of displacement current that's generated with the help of the trigger with the source AC. So it's not magic, but we can do some very interesting things. As you see here, the, the, the wheels are probably spinning because now we have our audio in, we have our speaker which is being driven by this source here. We're not hearing it, but it's still displacing the current through the action here which is giving us an amplified, which is vibrating our speaker and giving us the wattage and the regular audio frequency that we would normally have here. Again, without using transistors, MOSFETs or anything, all magnetic amplifiers. So this is where it gets very good and this is where it gets related to the Don Smith setup, right? Don Smith would use an inverter here and go 60 hertz here, very low, low uh, current, just a trigger. And then here, he would have his high frequency, high voltage, high frequency, high voltage as his input. You start seeing the resemblances now, but the thing is, Maybe there is, but I've never seen the diodes in his circuits. And now the speaker in this system here takes care of the filtering, right? Because we're going to hear only what's in the audio range and we're going to have an amplified. Now what's very interesting is this is where it gets really fun because let's say we have a high voltage field of mostly pure potential of what we were working with. And again, like I said, we're sort of driving this in reverse. This is the low winding side. So we're going to feed at a high voltage, high frequency, but let's say we're using our earth batteries or some uh, flybacks or jewel thieves, whatever it is to give you that high, high voltage, but zero current, that, that more of an electrostatic field, right? What's going to happen is that this starts going really high, like, you know, over a thousand volts. Even though you have zero current or very near zero current, the displacement of the voltage itself, very much like when we do the displacement current between two potential differences, is what creates that extra energy. So just because there's a lot of voltage variance to shoes around, on this side here with the audio, which in this case is our 60 hertz low current trigger, it makes up for not having. You see, because normally we'd run maybe 100 volts here at high current, but what we're doing different here is we're running one kilovolt or more at zero current and we're taking advantage of the pure potential and the displacement of that instead. So we're converting with the help of the magnetic amplifier pure potential back to watts. Now again audio is not really what we're interested in so we take the speaker out we put another transformer here lots of windings here and just a few here, one or two. And then, very much like Don Smith, we have our high wattage bulb here, let's say 20 watts, shining from the saturation of the core here caused by our trigger, but actually converting the displacement 
of the one kilovolt or higher uh, flow within the circuit. So um, what I'm getting at is I think Don Smith forgot to mention, you know, when I see a lot of Don Smith circuits, I see it here as the final product, more or less. But there's not that other system here. The extra coil here to get back, it's going to be low voltage but high current, you know what I'm getting at? So you might end up having like 6 volts AC, but it might be like 15 watts or something like that. I'm just making this up real quick here. But of course on the, um, you could convert this to DC and use it, or you can do whatever you want with it. But my point is, um, I think this is in essence something that he wasn't talking about, but I guess to some people it was obvious. And with that, it led me to uh, the conclusion that you probably need another transformer here to run your load. So, um, with that said, I hope you enjoy the information. Again, all for um, transparency. And I haven't even covered, you know, the using the different grounds. We all know that depending on where you hook up your, your grounds, you could do a lot more of pure potential differences to amplify this. So, um, especially on the high frequency, high voltage side, if you put, you know, near one of these diodes, even some antennas, you're probably gonna do, you might even double your efficiency just by doing that. So just a few tricks that I've uh, figured out along the way with the one wire system here that we can make applicable to this as well. And of course, there's probably a lot more variants that I haven't thought of here. Just putting this out there, because we were talking about the Don Smith in a few of my uh, videos and it came up in the comments. And people were asking about magnetic amplifiers as well. So I thought I'd cover, you know, the information is widely available out there. But it's not really presented, you know, on a silver platter labeled Don Smith Magnetic Amplifier, you know. The people have to make the links on their own and um, depending where you are at all this stuff, it may or may not be obvious. So uh, even as much as I've done, you know, I know this stuff. It's not that I don't know it, it's sometimes it doesn't occur to me when I'm working on a project. Oh, here's the fix. I knew it all along. So. If people are working on the quantum energy generator and they're wondering how to isolate the high voltage side from the trigger, this is a perfect way of doing it right here, a bucking configuration. So again, thank you all for watching. Looking forward to all your comments.